Okay, let's talk about linear equations. So what I want to do in this video is just uh, quickly over, go over an example problem and uh, just kind of uh, strengthen your understanding on what is a linear equation, okay, what they are in algebra. And uh, this is an example, obviously, of a linear equation, but there's other ways we need to think about linear equations as well. It's a big topic, again, in algebra. But before we get uh, going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TABA Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And if you're interested in learning uh, from me, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my full and complete math courses in the description of this video. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into a linear equation. So first things first, we got this description. So we have two words here, linear, and then we have equations. So let's just look at this word here, equations. So equations, anything in mathematics and algebra or any other type of mathematics that has an equal sign in it, we describe it as an equation. Okay, so that's the first thing, right? So we're, we, get, we have some sort of equation, so it's going to have to have an equal sign. And then here, a linear, if you look at this word carefully, we have this little subword, and that is line. Okay, so what we're really talking about are equations of line or line equations. All right, so an easy way to understand it is all linear equations you can model as some sort of line. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, a little bit further before we get into this example. Okay, all right, so let's say we have the xy plane here, okay? All right, so we have x and we have y. Okay, so lines can look like this. They can have some sort of slope, all right? And the equation to this line would be something like a y equals mx plus b. All right, this is called slope-intercept. So, for example, this line could be like y equals 2x plus 3, something like that, okay? Now, there is another form called standard form, okay, and that looks like this. Let's say 3x plus 4y equals 7. That's another form of a line, okay, or an equation of a line. So this is an example of a linear equation, and this is an example of a linear equation. And... Um, for those of you out there uh, who've studied algebra before, y equals mx plus b is a, a format that we like to graph lines. Okay, so when we're graphing lines on xy plane, what we're really doing is graphing a linear equation. All right, and the equation of this line, okay, is some sort of algebraic equation that involves y and x. Okay, now you can also have lines that go this way, horizontal. All right, these are y equal lines, some y equals some number, and then we also have lines that go vertical, and this is some x equals number. Okay, so for example, x equals negative 7 is an equation of a vertical line that goes through negative 7 on the x axis. Okay, so our y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line that goes through negative 3 on the y axis. Now, I don't want to go too far in here because, again, linear equations, it's a big topic, and it covers that description, covers a lot of different type of equations in algebra. But let's just make sure you understand linear equations, okay, are equations of lines, right? So if I wanted to know what the equation of a line that's a sloped line, it's going to involve both the y and x, okay? So any line that involves y and x is going to be some sort of line with a slope, and then here we have our uh, horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, so that's one major way to think of linear equations. Now let's go back, talk about another way to keep, uh, keep your brain straight with linear equations, if you will. And let's take a look at some example of equations. So let's say I have 2x plus 3 equals 9. And let's contrast with uh, this equation with something like this, 2x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Okay, so this equation over here is linear, all right? 
And this one over here is not. And I'll tell you what this is in a second, okay? So what makes an equation linear? So we know that an equation, all right, that describes a line, okay, or the equation of a line is a linear equation. But what makes it a linear equation when we look at it algebraically? Well, kind of a simple way to um, understand this is if you look at the x variable, here we have x to the first power, okay? This variable, and of course we don't write it to the first power, we just write it 2x, but really it has a little one up there, okay? So this is this variable is to the first power, unlike this variable over here is x squared, then we have 3x, of course this, this is to the first, but we don't write it as a first. So equations where the highest power is just one, and you would see it like this, 2x plus three equals nine, for example, highest power of the variable is just one, is a linear equation, okay? Now, if we have the highest power to the variable, let's say our variable x here is two, okay, we go up one, we have another type of equation, okay? This equation is called quadratic, okay? This type of equation. This is a quadratic equation, and it has a different shape. It has a shape of a parabola, okay? Here, these type of equations have a shape of a line. So it's really important that, you know, when you're using terms like, oh, we're going to study linear equations, you have a concept of what they are and what they uh, are not. Of course, there's other type of equations in algebra, many different types, rational equations, radical equations, systems of equations, exponential equations, on and on and on. So, um, you know, these terms, you know, mean something, okay? So anyways, let's focus in again on linear equations. Now, here, let's take a look at this, 2x plus 3 equals 9. One of the things that you want to be able to do when we're talking about linear equations is to solve them, okay? How do we solve linear equations? This is, again, fundamental basic algebra stuff. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this example up here. All right, let me go ahead and erase this so we don't confuse what's going on. All right, so let's just go over this quick example of a linear equation. And what we're trying to do here, first of all, let's just see here, we have all x's and it's to the first power, okay? And there obviously isn't a, an equal sign, so it is an equation. So what we want to do here is to be able to solve for x, okay? Solve this linear equation. All right, so there's all kinds of different varieties of linear equations. Some involve fractions, uh, positive and negative numbers, or decimals. Let's just take a look at this problem uh, because... This will kind of uh, uh, illustrate some of the things you really need to be uh, focusing on uh, when you're dealing with many types of linear equation problems. Okay, so the first thing is the following. Let me see if I can highlight this. Well, that doesn't work so well. But when we're looking at a linear equation, okay, we're looking to solve it. What you want to first uh, focus in on is anything with parentheses, any any expressions like this with parentheses. Okay, so here I have x plus 2. I have this 3 outside this x plus 2. So what we want to do is look to see if there are any of these situations. Now, it could be an, uh, an x minus 2 or it could be x minus 5, uh, whatever the case is. And there could be multiple different things going on here. Okay, anything with a number outside of a parentheses like this is a signal for us to say, hey, do the distributive property, okay, the distributive property, okay? Now, I could tell you my years teaching math, many, 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 many years, this right here, the distributive property, so many students mess this up. Don't let that be you, <laughs> okay? You got to make sure you know how to do uh, the distributive property well. All right, so let's get back to the distributive property. What is it? Well, that's a whole other lesson in and of itself. But basically, this value outside of the parentheses, the first thing you have to do when you're solving a linear equation is to go ahead and distribute okay, this value to our inside uh, terms here. So it's going to be 3 times x, so 3x, and then 3 times this 2, and that's 6. Okay, And then we'll just rewrite the rest of the equation like so. Okay, So the first thing you want to, be, you want to do when you're dealing with linear equations is to look to see if you have any distributive property situations and then go ahead and handle uh, those. Now, 
there are a couple of different other stylistic or different approaches that you could take. You could combine like terms, et cetera, et cetera. But let's just kind of keep, keep it simple and give you kind of a procedure you can always follow because you can't really combine like terms in an equation until you've finished doing the distributor property, wherever it may be. Okay. And it may or may not be in every single problem. Okay. So you got to be on the lookout for these. Okay. So now that we've done the distributor property. And again, just be super careful here because this is a place where students, you know, uh, make these little errors. Uh, here, I'll give you an example. Let's say here, three uh, times X plus two. A student will be like, oh, okay, that's three X plus two. They'll just write the two there. They forgot to, they'll for, they forget to uh, distribute this, this number to this value as well. Okay, that's a real common type of mistake. You know, um, I'm sure you uh, fellow math teachers, if there are anybody out there, there's a math teacher watching this video can appreciate over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of quizzes, tests, etc. years and years and years, you see this mistake come up consistently. Okay, so I'm telling you right now, if you're a math student and you're learning this topic, okay, you have a high probability of making this error until you really kind of master this. So really focus on the distributive property. Okay, so now once the distributive property is done, we want to go ahead and uh, combine like terms on both sides of the equation. And um, I'm assuming that you've studied, you know, the distributive property on like terms. Again, this is just a kind of overall video. Uh, you know, I'll do more in depth if you're on my YouTube channel. I got many, many more videos that are more in depth on this. But combining like terms is focused on the left-hand side of the equation. So it's like, okay, 3x and negative 8x, okay, these are our like terms, okay, so I can combine them. So I just add the coefficients 3 and negative 8, and that gives me negative 5x. And then I have my 6 here, so I can rewrite all of this or simplify this as negative 5x plus 6. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, I just have x plus 9. I can't really simplify that much more than it already is. So that leads me to this situation now. Give ourselves some room. All right, so here, what do I need to do? Well, when you're solving equations, remember, you want to get all the variables on the left-hand side, and you want to get all the numbers on the right-hand side. So this is like your next kind of phase of this uh, problem, okay? So let's go ahead and deal with this x. So this is really a 1x, okay? It's on the right-hand side. I want to move it over to the left-hand side, so I'm going to subtract a negative 1x here, but I have to also do it to the other side of the equation, okay? So the main idea, okay, when the main principle when you're solving equations is whatever you do to one side of the equation, as long as you do it to the other side, you're okay, okay? You kind of think of this as a teeter-totter, right? You, whatever you do here, as long as you do here, it, it, it keeps in balance. So now you want to kind of add down in column format. So negative 5x plus a negative uh, 1x is going to give me this negative 6x plus 6. My x over here went away, but really what I did was move it to the left-hand side, and I have that equal to 9. Okay? All right, so keeping in mind, do I have all my variables to the left-hand side? Yes, I do but I don't have all my numbers to the right-hand side. Let's go, to, go ahead and make that happen now. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6. Okay, I'm going to use the same concept from both sides of the equation. And that gives me, you can see I already uh, did the work in advance, but uh, let's go ahead and explain each step. It's really important. So this will give me a negative 6x. All right, just bring this down. The 6s go away. Okay, positive, positive 6 plus a negative 6 is 0, and then here this is 3. All right, now, at this point, I, I, I'm left with negative 6x equals 3, so we see our answer is going to be uh, x equals uh, negative 3 over 6, but how do we get to that uh, point? And obviously, this is actually going to be a negative 1 half. We've got to reduce that answer. But at this point, you're left with a basic, what we call one-step equation. So to solve for x, to get x by itself, I have to divide both sides of the equation by a negative 6. And that's what uh, this is right here. Okay, so x is going to be equal to 3 divided by negative 6. 
okay? Of course, when we reduce that, that's going to be a negative one-half. And that is the solution to this particular linear equation, right? So um, this is a real kind of basic problem, but it has enough variety in it, so enough of the moving parts that um, are found in a lot of linear equation um, examples. So here we are solving a linear equation, okay? But there's other things we could do in this uh, broader topic. You could graph the uh, linear equation, or you can find the equation of a line, which is in itself a linear equation. So you want to keep this topic, you know, keep the description of what you're trying to do, you know, um, you know, don't confuse it. Uh, it is a super important topic, and it's absolutely critical in your understanding of algebra uh, and whether you're taking another kind of class like let's say college algebra algebra 2 whatever even pre-calculus doesn't make a difference this is stuff that you need to know and even the most you know um advanced students like say you're in you know um uh, pre-calculus or even calculus a lot of students don't you know don't remember what is you know what exactly do these equations mean and and uh, you know the description of them. Anyways, I hope this video helped you out to get uh, clearer on what linear equations are. Again, if you want to, you know, really learn uh, from you know from me in a you know really more in depth uh, manner, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my uh, math program in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best best in your mathematics adventures and of course in linear equations. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.